Hi everybody, hope you're well. Uh, as you can see, I'm not in the caravan today. No, I've run out of time. I can't head over to the van to do any filming. Um, plus also a couple of the things which have been going on at home means that I'm a little bit housebound at the moment. But that doesn't mean to say we can't get on with another Q&A Wednesday. We're into our second season. That's right, the next month of Q&A Wednesdays. So whilst we roll the intro, let me pull up the questions and let's crack on into it. Now, this one, I thought we would answer a lot of questions that I've been asked in various forms about uh, a tow car um, and tow cars in general. So I thought I would aggregate a lot of those questions up together and answer those in this uh, video. So I won't necessarily be pulling out any particular person who's asked the question, but instead aggregating it because I've been asked these questions quite a lot. However, there is one question I want to answer. Well, it's two actually uh, from this uh, particular comment. Um, would you take part in one of Bailey big adventures if asked? Uh, I'd say you have a higher profile than a lot who go on them. That's very kind of you to say that. Also, what are your thoughts on the unrealistic winners in the tow car awards? But if you had the money, what would you go out and buy? Um, wh what would you go out and buy a new tow car, and what would you get? Okay, there's three questions there really. Um, let's answer the first two. Let's start off with the Bailey Big Adventure. Um, I've never been asked. And if I'll be honest with you, I don't think I ever will be asked. What I do think about The Big Adventure though, is that they are a very aspirational, inspirational set of uh, adventures. You know, I don't think many of us would want to take a caravan to the Sahara. I don't think many of us would want to take a caravan to the Arctic Circle. I know people do, uh, I'm not saying that, that it's impossible, um, but I just think that it's not for everyone. So what I think they need to do in the adventures, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think they really do a good job of this, is bring it back down to something which is achievable. Take little nuggets of those big adventures and break them down into little bite-sized pieces that we can all take and learn from and, and enjoy. So for instance, towing across a frozen lake in the Arctic Circle, we learned this, this, and this about towing in very cold weather. Why not try this, this, and this as top tips if you're towing in in, in frozen conditions. Um, we found that we were on a very sandy environment. Um, our vehicles behaved like this. So when you're out checking, um, when you're out in sandy environments, make sure you check this, this, and this, make sure that the vehicles are performing well. And then other things which really knit at home is, you know, whilst we're in Morocco, we tried this dish. Why not give this a go? Cook it on your Kadak, a lamb tagine, for instance. Or when we're in the frozen Arctic Circle, we had this as a beautiful winter warmer. Try this recipe on your next winter uh, adventure. I think it's little broken down little pieces like that that I think make it tangible for us to enjoy. Um, that would be something I would take part in and I would love to get involved in that side of things. I, again, I don't think I ever will be asked. Now, the second part of that question was all about Tokar Awards, what I thought about the unrealistic winners. I think, uh, and let me just start this off by saying, I, I'm not gonna single out any tow car awards. I know that there's a, a few that are run by, uh, that there's one that run by each club, there's one in a magazine, and um, and I know that, that uh, another magazine has their own reviews of tow cars, etc. I I think tow car awards, I think they've got themselves in a bit of a predicament, a bit of a problem. I think it's a, a tough, gig. I think it's a really tough, tough gig really, because unfortunately a lot of people are now very skeptical of the tow car awards. Um, I, maybe they always have been. I certainly have always been skeptical of any award ceremony. Um, years ago I was working in the fringes of the hi-fi TV, um, the brown goods industry, and it was an open secret then that the coveted awards for best speaker, best hi-fi, best TV, best this, best that. Um, it was an open secret that it wasn't down to the product, it was down to the what marketing budget could be spent on the journalists and who had the best time. And th that was certainly the case years ago and it never really was about the product. I mean, it couldn't be, could it? Because audio is subjective. Anyway, I digress. Toka awards are difficult because, you know, it's not an open playing field. It's not a flat playing field in terms of they are testing every single car. Sadly, nowadays, they can the awards can only test the cars which have been um, loaned to them by the manufacturers, 
that are on the press fleet have a uh, tow ball attached to them and the manufacturers are willing to let them be tested in a fairly gruelling environment. Now I'm not saying the tow car awards don't do a good job, I think they do an excellent job with the the resources that they're given. I think it's a very difficult gig now because literally there are fewer and fewer vehicles becoming available for them to test and then share their um, their findings with all of us. I know a couple of the people who do testing of the vehicles whilst they're out and about and you know I know for a fact they do a good job. I know that they try their best and I know that it's very very scientific and I know there's a lot of preparation that goes into it and it does that you know they do do a good job of testing. It's just with what resource they'll be given. You know, a couple of years ago, you would have found a lot of vehicles from the Volkswagen Audi group. So you would have seen Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda, Seat, Lamborghini, Bentley. Um, you know, there was a whole load of, of vehicles under that one umbrella because that was, at that time, what was available. Other years, you would have seen a whole suite of Volvos. Again, because that's what was available. And and for this year and next year, I couldn't tell you what's going to be available. I would suspect there'll be a lot of Kias and Hyundais. And also, right now, it's a very difficult choice in terms of tow car. Um, and this has got nothing to do with the awards, but right now it's a very difficult choice. If you wanted to go and buy a brand new tow car, you are left with a choice of, well, do you go for uh, a traditional petrol or a diesel engine? Do you go for a hybrid or do you go for an EV? And there's a very, it's right now, it's a very confusing market. So I think the, the people that do the awards, I think they try their best. I just don't think necessarily it's communicated the best with, with you and I. Okay, so the next question is one that we've been asked a few times, and it is, what is our current tow car? Okay, so the current tow car we have is a 2008 uh, VW Touareg. Uh, it's a 7L6, that's the specific uh, model number. It's a facelift model. Um, it's a V6 3 litre diesel. Um, that's our current tow car. Um, the reason I've got that car is because my beloved BMW uh, 535D E61, which I had for a long, long time. Unfortunately, it met its end when it careered into a deer down the road here whilst we were going out for the day. Uh, a deer came bouncing across the road, I hit it, and it bent the bumper, a wing, smashed a headlight, and cranked the bumper. That was all it was. It was just that. But it was written off. Incredible. Um, because the, the cost of the panels are so expensive these days. Um, so it was just after COVID and I tried my hardest to buy that car back to, uh, to get so I could repair it myself because I could see it was nothing st structural. It was literally just the bodywork. I mean, even the washer bottle was intact. Uh, I did try to buy it back and see if I could get the panels, but no garage was able, were able to or willing to do the work as in swap over the, the panels. So it was a very difficult thing. So I said goodbye to that car, which I did love and um, we bought this car because even back then we were toying with the idea of getting a bigger caravan so we said let's get another 4x4 um, and I did have a hunt round for various 4x4s. I've written up our blog on our website in fact where I did go out looking at tow cars. I started looking at the Mercedes ML350, I looked at the Volvo XC90 and obviously this VW Touareg and back then I didn't have a lot of cash to spend on a new car, so it was literally um, the insurance money, which was about 6,000. Um, it was the insurance money plus a little bit more that I had to spend. So it wasn't a lot of cash to go and spend. So I did go out and I had a look at all those cars. Um, I've written up what I liked, what I didn't like and how I found it. I'm gonna put a link to that down below and also in the corner if you're interested. The tow car itself um, is lovely. It's very comfortable, it's very wafty. Um, it hasn't got any bells and whistles on it really. It's quite a low spec vehicle, um, but it's very, very comfortable. The towing capacity is 3,500 kilograms, which is way heavier than any caravan that you're ever gonna put on the back. Um, and it absolutely, it does a cracking job of, of towing. Um, I've never had a tow car so comfortable as that one before. Towing the Ridgeway, it was a great deal better than the 5 Series. Um, towing the Twin Axle is an absolute dream, but I'm going to discuss that another time. 
The, uh, the only thing I will say about the car is it's incredibly thirsty and it's incredibly hungry on tyres and brakes. Um, because it's permanent four wheel drive, it, it does like to chew through its tyres quite a lot. Um, miles per gallon, when I'm not towing uh, and I'm on a stretch down the motorway, I can usually get about 31, 32 miles to the gallon. Um, with the caravan on the back, I'm getting about 22, 23 um, with the caravan in tow. So you can see the significant drop of, of the MPG. Um, it's an expensive car to run. The tax is at the moment, it's the top bracket because of the emissions. Um, it's not ULS compliant, obviously. So if I go into a city or if I go into um, a town, London or Bristol, um, I have to pay for the privilege to drive in and around. So generally speaking, it's not great um, in terms of you know affordability, but in towing capacity wise, it's an absolute dream. So a question that I have asked a lot in a number of guises in a number of ways is if money was no object, what would be my ideal tow car? And that's a difficult one to answer. I think um, it would be another four x four if money was no object. And I would either go down the Porsche Cayenne route or I would go down the Range Rover route. Um, they would be petrol. They wouldn't be hybrid. Um, I don't think, um, but I would have to double check on a number of things. First of all, the towing capacity. Um, I want to make sure it's it's really high. Um, I want to make sure that it's petrol, so it's ULES compliant, um, because the ULES rules will, over time, tighten up and tighten up and tighten up. So I'd have to go for something which is either ULES compliant. That may force my hand to get a hybrid. Um, it certainly wouldn't be a diesel anymore because uh, diesels right now are demonised which for me is an absolute travesty because they do such a great job of do providing, um, you know, very talky, very um, relatively fuel efficient um, and low maintenance vehicles, which just keep going on and on and on. So if it was money, no object, I think it would be a Range Rover. The question then is if I was to have a Range Rover is what vehicle would I have whilst it's in the workshop being repaired? Okay, so another question I get asked quite a lot is what I look for in a tow car. And this is a really good one. Um, what do you look for when you buy a brand new car anyway, or when you're looking for a new car? Um, all of those things, really. So it needs to be comfortable. It needs to be able to uh, carry all your passengers with ease. It needs to be uh, relatively affordable. It needs to be, um, you know, of the right engine capacity because of your own mileage, etc. And all of those things that I would look for in a, in a normal car if I was to go and buy one. Um, but then there's additional things as well. So obviously I need to make sure it can have a tow bar fitted. Um, and there's some great resources for that. If you go over onto the um, Witter tow bar website, you can put the registration plate in there and it tells you what sort of uh, tow bars are available for your car. So when we were shopping for the Touareg, I had all the details written down about our um, our, our caravan. So I had the MTPLM, I had the current nose weight which we, we tow with, the maximum tow nose weight that the caravan would support, and the minimum, so the five and the seven percent. Um, I'd had all that information with me. So when we would go look at the car, I'd have all the details of the caravan. So I'd know that it's maximum nose weight on the tow ball, um, knowing that it could actually take a tow bar, uh, making sure that the towing capacity was well well over stretched for the weight of the caravan um, and you know just generally know that those numbers all lined up um, that was one thing that i was quite specific about that's why i when i was looking for the tuareg i i literally isolated it down to three types of vehicles that i wanted to go and look at that being the mercedes the volvo and the vw um, there were other ones that i wanted to look at but they were at that time well out of my finances so i didn't even contemplate those and even in that price range, you know, there were still other vehicles that would have done the job perfectly. Um, but we chose this one and it's it's been all right. Um, so that's what I would look for in a tow car. Um, and also just go and have a look to see whether there has been any user reviews or user um, input on, um, on, that on that specific tow car. It might be worthwhile signing up to some owner forums 
um, it might be worthwhile checking out other people's reactions like um, on the club forums as to people who've used those tow cars. Um, and if you see someone on a site with the car that you're thinking of buying, you know, just go and have a chat with them and have a, have a chat with them and see what they think. Um, so that's what, that's what I would, that's what I would look for. And that's the steps that I personally took as well when I was going to look at the Tuareg. Um, right. And I think that's the end of today's Q and A. Um, I think I've answered most of the questions uh, to do with the tow car. I'm sure there'll be things that I've missed off, but you know what to do. If you've got any questions about tow cars, put them in the comments down below and I'll see if I can answer those in an upcoming Q and A. Right, I need to pack, I need to charge batteries and I need to get ready because I'm off very early in the morning. So I will see you next week. Many thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Bye bye.